last week's video, we showed you guys the release of Chief Brody, our huge alligator snapping turtle, into a massive 5,000 gallon pond right here on our property. Well, we just got something cool to make things even better for him. Just last week I said, hopefully one day we'll get Chief Brody a girlfriend. And who knows, maybe we'll end up with a female with him someday. And look, we have. One of our good friends who watches this very channel saw the video of Chief Brody being released into this pond. He called me up and he said, hey Chris, why don't you come grab my alligator snapper? I think it would do really well in that pond. I said, well, is it a female? Because I can't put two males together. Well, I went up there, I checked her out, and she is in fact a female. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Ellen, the adult female alligator snapping turtle. So uh, why did we name her Ellen, you might be asking? Well, Chief Brody's name comes from the movie Jaws. And in that movie, Chief Brody's wife's name was Ellen. So Ellen, Chief Brody, get it? Ellen has lived with her friend for five years now. She's the only turtle that was kept in that environment. So we know she is healthy. We know she's been on an appropriate diet and she is ready to join forces with Chief Brody here in the Aquascape ecosystem. But before we let her go in there, I wanted you guys to get a really nice, awesome look at her. One of the first things you may notice about Ellen is the sheer size of her compared to Chief Brody. And that's because when it comes to alligator snapping turtles, the females are in fact the smaller of the sexes. There's always variation. There are larger females and smaller females. Just like how some male alligator snappers tower above Chief Brody, there are in fact larger examples of females. But she's pretty standard size, she will get a little bit bigger and fill out, but she can breed at this size, and I'd say she's more than ready to do so. She's got some algae covering that beautiful golden yellow coloration on her shell. That's normal for a lot of aquatic turtles. It doesn't hurt them at all. It's more unpleasing for us to look at, but it will come off just like it's going to with Chief Brody in here. You'll notice the lure at the end of Ellen's tongue by looking at the inside of her mouth, and that turtle is famous for having that lure in which it uses to lure in unsuspecting fish. Once they get too close, she snaps on them. That's it. That she's got herself a meal. But contrary to ever popular belief, these turtles do not always just sit around on the bottom of a swamp and do nothing. Alligator snapping turtles will actually hunt up and down river systems and that's what she's gonna get to do in here with Brody in the aquascape. So, what do you say lady? Are you ready to meet your man? All right, Ellen, here you go. Welcome to paradise. Right now, Ellen's instinct is to dig down and stay hidden. Turtles don't really ever use that kind of instinct where they know that they need to find refuge because if they're feeling threatened in any way, that's one of the ways that they'll protect themselves. Remember, alligator snappers don't chase after people and try to hunt them down. Instead, they will flee. But when you're holding them like that and they're exposed to the air and being out of the water, they'll gape their mouths because that's their defense mechanism. They know if you get too close, they can clamp down on you and you won't want to bother them after that. So even though we've got a beautiful week in the 70s right now, we're not out of the woods yet as far as cooler temperatures go. We're still gonna have cool nights, we will still have some raw feeling days, and plenty of rain to come as spring really takes hold. That's good for these guys because they can adapt slowly. Chief Brody and Ellen are gonna have to get used to this pond and then they're gonna get used to each other, but we will probably have some breeding on the horizon and not far from now. These turtles don't need it overly warm, they don't like it too hot, so it's gonna be a good, slow transition for them into the active season. Right now, they're gonna find their favorite spots in here. Chief Brody's already been kind of figuring it out. We'll see what Ellen thinks of that, and uh, hopefully there's gonna be some breeding soon. But right now, it's just amazing to watch these two mammoth turtles enjoy this massive ecosystem all to themselves. And you know, when breeding does start, I gotta tell you, it's a pretty vigorous affair, and it is violent at times, but these animals are robust, rugged, and very equipped to handle that kind of behavior from each other. If these two do successfully breed, then probably around June, at night, Ellen will leave the water, which is really the only time that these turtles will actually leave the water, unlike other aquatic species, and she will dig a nest with her back legs somewhere in the terrestrial area of this ecosystem and deposit a very large clutch of eggs. Could be 30 or more, could be less than that. But we've got a lot to do today, so what do you say you come with me and we go herping around the yard and see who is woken up for spring.
All right, let's see who's awake. Here we go. We've got several tortoises out already. We're in the 70s. The weather has been absolutely incredible and these animals are ready to start the season. So this is always by far one of the most exciting times of the year for us because we get to be reunited with a lot of our animals that have been asleep for the last few months while winter has uh, done its thing. But I want to show you something really cool. Remember Athena, the giant Eastern Hermans tortoise we have? Come here. Here she is, Athena, the largest known Eastern Hermans tortoise in the United States of America. If you guys recall from an earlier video, Athena, things were touch and go with her for a little bit because she is extremely old. We have absolutely no idea just how old, but because of her extreme age, you know, something eventually is going to happen, right? And she developed this swollen area uh, down near one of her legs, actually kind of where the leg meets the plastron. And it was really kind of scary because our vet, you know, really checked it out. We couldn't figure out what it was and we were afraid if it was going to be some kind of tumor or something. We ended up treating it. It went away. And now here she is back outside, ready to begin another season with us. And who knows, maybe we'll get some eggs from her this year. Because remember, just because tortoises get old, that does not mean they stop being reproductive. They're not like mammals. They actually keep going. And in fact, a lot of elderly tortoises are actually better mothers in terms of knowing the real good spots to put the eggs so that they can safely hatch, that kind of stuff. They're just really, really seasoned at that point. They know what they're doing. So here she is and she's grazing on some edibles that grow naturally here in the pen. And I, I love this tortoise. She's truly incredible. She's 11.2 inches long. And I'm gonna grab another Eastern Hermit's tortoise so you can see just how big she really is. So here is your standard sized adult female reproductive Eastern Hermans tortoise and what you would normally encounter with them. Look at that. And here is Athena. So you've got an animal that's around eight inches, eight and a half inches, and then an animal that is 11.2 inches. So don't be fooled when you see people say that Hermans tortoises grow to be only four or five inches. That only goes for the Dalmatian and Western Hermans tortoises. As far as the Eastern goes, they get much bigger and in fact, they can get pretty huge. Since it's so sunny out and warm, it's yet another day that Bubbles, the rescued leopard tortoise with the flat soft shell, can spend some time outdoors and it will continue to help these bones and shell hopefully harden. I know a lot of you have been concerned about Bubbles and you've reached out asking questions like, if her shell does harden, is that going to hurt her in any way as far as breathing goes? Because if you recall, when she breathes, you can actually see the shell move a bit. No she will actually be okay. You're only seeing that because the shell is soft. It's similar to a pancake tortoise and their shell is supposed to be pliable because that's normal for that species. So they can jam into crevices, they inflate their lungs, it expands the body. When it comes to the leopard tortoise, they're not supposed to be able to do that. She's supposed to have a nice significant dome to her shell. Um, so once it hardens, no, you're not gonna see her have trouble breathing or anything like that. It's what we want to happen so that she has a future. Uh, but she is lifting her body and now she's back out here in the sun today and she can do some grazing and, and be a little bit more of a normal leopard tortoise. There's yet another Herman's tortoise, and this one is a Western. This little female's name is Angel. And she is now up for the season. Gosh, she's heavy already too, that's great. That means that she stayed nice and hydrated during hibernation. That's why it's important that these animals hibernate in the appropriate areas, so that they can continue to absorb moisture during that time, because they absolutely need it, even when they do come from arid or at least slightly arid environments. This particular tortoise's locale and group that occur in this enclosure with her naturally come from the island of Mallorca, and that is a Balearic island uh, in Spain. Really unique tortoises, very small, fully grown. You can see she's only about five and a half inches and she is a reproductive female. And I just love seeing her every single spring when she wakes up. 
and looking forward to spending time with you throughout the active season. She really looks incredible. Look at that yellow. Okay, go ahead. Let's see who else is out. Okay. So it seems like just yesterday we were preparing these little greenhouses for the tortoises to go back into to spend the winter, but now they are literally waking up for the season right now. So you've got Western Hermans tortoises from the south of France in there. Then you've got Western Hermans tortoises from Italy in here. Some of them have already made their way out, but let's take a close look at them. Get some of this dirt off. Wow, looking amazing. That's another female, bright eyed, clear nares. She looks great. And those spring rains will help wash the rest of this off. And she's just gonna look like a big bumblebee walking around in the grass. This is a female Gulf Coast box turtle. She's looking pretty good. I've been keeping tabs on her the last few days because she was the first of the Gulf Coast box turtle group to wake up. And when she first came out, she had like kind of sticky eyes and just a little bit of discharge coming out of the nose. And a lot of times people will be fooled by that and they will think, oh no, the animal is terribly sick. And it's kind of just like a hibernation sickness, if you will. You have hibernation sickness. I can't see. Your eyesight will return in time. Uh, they just kind of expel a few things when they first wake up. Sometimes the eyes are a little bit sticky and they can be gunky, but uh, that's it. It's nothing to worry about. You can see that she now looks bright eyed. Her nose is clear. All she needed was some vitamin D3, that beautiful sun and warmth. And she is heavier than ever. And she, like the others, is ready to start the 2024 season. So she doesn't need any intervention from me. Just a quick health assessment and I can send her on her way. Got a few more Gulf Coast box turtles right here. This is a male, this is a female. I'm not gonna disturb them. They don't seem to really be ready to come out to the sun. They will be soon. I can see unit far out at the end of the pond over there. He's doing something. And uh, it's funny how I know it's him because you can see these two big old hams in the water right there. <laughs> Those are his love handles from uh, the excessive weight that he put on from improper care. He's doing something. He might be uh, checking out Janet, the female, or he might be, uh, he might be eating something, I don't know. But he made it through hibernation, as I suspected. <laughs> How do you find your giant obese snapping turtle? You look for his butt. As soon as I went to walk away, they surfaced and I could tell they are in fact trying to breed. So uh, there you go. Janet and Unit, the rescued snapping turtles, uh, getting down to business. Speaking of snapping turtles, we are not quite done with alligator snapping turtles in this video because we just got another new arrival. Come on. All right, so this animal just arrived from the Berkshire County Turtle Rescue uh, and they are up in Massachusetts. And this turtle came in, rescue situation. I believe it actually came in with a common snapping turtle, um, but they couldn't how's the uh, alligator snapper, so they sent it to us. Hi Chris, thanks again for taking this little one. Tracy, Tracy's doing some really cool work up there at Berkshire. And we have, oh, we gotta cut this up. Oh, there we go. Cute little juvenile. It's got a straight tail, which is good. It doesn't have the pigtail. Shell seems to be in decent shape. And look at that, isn't that amazing? This little animal, if it's a male, will be as big, if not bigger, than Chief Brody one day, or the same size or bigger as Ellen, if it's in fact a female. But there's no way for us to accurately sex it right now. They all look like little females when they are young like this. You can tell by that tail right there. Time will tell. Looks like 
it had a little bit of an injury right there to its beak if you look. See that space there? So I don't know, it could have maybe bit something that cracked the beak, but most likely just cosmetic. These are super tough animals, so I'm not really worried about that. Very cool. Little mini dinosaur. So we'll get this little one set up, give it a name. We'll probably raise it alongside Hooper, the young one that we're growing up from our old male chum. Missing a couple nails back there. A little bit, looks like maybe the common snapper beat this one up a little bit. It may have bit off some of its toenails, but all that's healed up and overall it seems to be okay. You ready? You ready to tell people? Okay, we got something special for you guys to see. Now, if you've been following us on Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram, then you probably already saw the initial announcement for this. But this campaign is now live, folks. That's right. The Otis Plush campaign through Makeshift is now live. And you can order this very stuffy and have your own little Otis in your home. What do you think, pal? He's like, what? That's you, not quite you, but you. Makeshift's awesome. They designed this plush to resemble Otis, and now you all can have your very own. But here's the deal. This only goes into production if 200 units are sold. So I'm gonna leave a link in the description of this video so you can go check it out for yourself and place an order if you want. If 200 units are not sold, everybody gets refunded. So it's no loss for you guys. Um, but if you want this, I think it's pretty darn cool. We all love it. And uh, we're gonna be pushing this thing hard. So please spread the word, use that link in the description Go check it out. Get your very own Otis plush uh, to support Garden State Tortoise and of course the real Otis right here. Could you please look at the camera? Nobody cares about me. They want to see you. Anyway, go do that. Click that link. Check it out. We hope you guys like it. We hope you order one and uh, see you in next week's video.